Hi, hi, and welcome, and back. welcome back. This I'm time I use I these uh, art materials. It is black. tinted charcoal from Doen. It's the 24 set. These are charcoal pencils that has been tinted. Some of them are natural colored, others are more colored. We'll see those later. The paper is Fabriano Acorello Fine Gray Cold Press. I'm only going to use half of that. And um, yeah, here I'm going to pick out some colors for the drawing. I've already sketched out a, a drawing on the paper and taped it down, as you can see. And it's my reference photo is from Pixabay, Bay, and it's I'm gonna only use it as a very loose interpretation. I'm just pretty much using it for, yeah, I, I got the idea to for the picture, but I I changed a lot of things. Uh, the left side of the picture is mostly true. Sorry, the right side of the picture is what is mostly true to the reference photo. The rest I I kind of made up. So I'm picking out a handful of colors or two and leave a couple of pencils in the tin. And um, yeah, where to put them? Like there maybe. And in the beginning you saw the XL charcoals too. And here I'm taking them out and is trying to decide if I want to use any of the colors there. And in the first go I decide against it and just put them over to one side. Not sure whether to put the lid on or not. And from here we are going to do speed drawing slash painting. Because this was a two hour sitting. And I want to talk uh, about a little bit more about the paper. It's a cold press fine grain 300 GSM 140 pound paper and it's 25% cotton. And I was not entirely happy with this. Uh, uh, in the beginning it worked okay. Here I'm calling in some, some areas with a sand color. And, um, and these pencils, they smooth out like, just like uh, you would with, with a charcoal stick or a pencil. And, and that's nice. I'm just calling it in. But later on it started to be a little difficult because um, the paper couldn't really keep up. But I got a drawing out of it and that was okay and I had okay fun with it. Here I'm wetting it all with just a watercolor brush. And that smooths things out a little more than just my fingers. And it also fixates the, the color to the page. If you don't use water or fixative on, on charcoal, it, uh, it will smear if you run your hand over it. And it makes it difficult to, uh, to save the drawing later, if, if you, unless you mount it uh, in a frame right away. And here I'm kind of testing out a another color that I think it was called golden ember or burned ember or something. And first I was just testing it out and when I was happy with it I used it for the rest of that tree trunk that I decided was going to be on that side of the, the drawing. And it's a little uneven here in the beginning but it get fixed later on. And um, they don't it, they don't feel like watercolor when you wet them. Yeah, and here's a hairdryer because I ever so slightly tested out touching the paper, the wet paper with the pencil and that was going to peel. So every time dry up between layers. Yeah, and here I go again down this side and I believe this was the layer I didn't initially uh, wet, which meant I got dirty hands because I ran my hand over it. Yeah, and I got a moist piece of toilet paper there to clean my fingers. And here I changed to a darker orange that's burned orange and go in and do some more shading on those mushrooms over there. The the pencils has a a nice touch to them. They're not too hard and not too soft either, but because they are what they are, and, and only the darkest of them are really charcoal, um, the the one, the yellow ochre-ish colors I'm using here are, um, 
they feel more like a really hard uh, soft pastel and um, but but they're nice and they, they give enough pigment off or color off that you um, you can work with them and they, they, but they are not given off so much that it is dusty not unless you really work over the same area and and push hard you can get them to become dusty but they are not inherently so uh, and I keep on going forth and back uh, every time I I think I got enough color on there I fix it with water at least for the first many layers and dry it up completely between with the hairdryer the hairdryer I'm using is just a little the most inexpensive travel uh, hairdryer I could find I would not ever use it to dry my hair because as mm, other cheap uh, hair dryers of a low quality it warms too much it would just burn my hair off but it's fantastic for watercoloring because it quickly gets the job done um, and here I'm starting th those mushrooms are not floating in the air they are actually attached to a tree trunk that covered in a kind of a leafy type of moss and I'm not gonna sit there and draw in exactly every little leaflet of of that moss I'm more going with kind of the the general idea of of the texture so I'm just kind of scribbling in in something that looks somewhat like the texture of that and here I'm realizing that I need a couple of purples as well because I noticed on my reference photo that the trunk or some other kind of moss I don't know there were some splotches here and there of, of purple and I decided I better get that drawn in right away uh, rather than trying to to add it on top of the green layer on and then I go on and scribble in my lines for for the moss and um, when you rub out the lines with your fingers you can nearly eradicate uh, all the the, li the initial lines you made but with water if you're not scrubbing too much with the brush you actually can maintain some of the original lines but they soften up and here I'm just adding water and I don't really want to smooth smooch out those lines too much I'm pretty much just dabbing the water on and yes it moves and yes it becomes all green all over the place but I, I kind of keep the lines in there it might be a little hard to see on the video but there was enough for me to work with afterwards and it, it keeps kind of the the idea of the texture but this is the base layer and it uh, yeah <laughs> that's how base layers often look and um, yeah I'm trying to work a little bit on the, the shading on the mushrooms here I'm pulling that green in to start shading the mushrooms and when I'm doing the the middle part later yeah I left the, the table for half an hour and I forgot the camera so there was a little clip out there here I'm going in with a darker green to add some some more definition and shading on on those moss bits and um, yeah just slowly working my way through and um, the pencils I, I really enjoyed using they, uh, they they got the right hardness to to work with and and the grade you, you can gradiate it a lot or a little or leave a, a def, well-defined line as you like I'm not really leaving any lines as of now I'm still working my way on layers here so I'll paint all that out a bit again the paper I mentioned already that that I wasn't too happy with the paper and because of my angle and I didn't zoom in close enough you can't really tell but it uh, it had a tense tendency to 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 yeah the, it was like the 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 color kind of seeped out to the side 
a little bit when something was wet and if if the pa part of the paper next to where I was painting wasn't 200% dry it um it it started to to bleed a little bit not too bad and not anything I could handle but it was just kind of annoying and um yeah I'm looking for colors here the colors on the left are the ones I have used the colors on the right lying flat are the ones I definitely I'm sure I'm gonna use and the ones on the right pointing upside down uh, up and down parallel to the paper are the ones I assume that I'll use and as I'm using one after the other they move over to the left and um, I don't know. I don't know. I think I used about half the set at the end, by the end of this. I um, the mushrooms didn't turn out quite as I wanted them because I don't know why this surprised me. But after I used the first two yellows, I went in and and they were kind of yellow ochreish, as you can see, brownish, uh, orange, ochre muted. I thought I had one that was a little more red and I didn't and that kind of surprised me and I should of course have looked before I <laughs> I used both so uh, so they I didn't get quite the the color variation in those that I wanted now when you look at that yellow and on some of the greens especially yeah here I grabbed the yellow ochre because I hope that would help me that's the Excel blog and blink and you miss it I used it a little bit and I was not happy with the result because it lays down too much pigment in what excuse me in one spot so especially here where I'm painting now at the middle there I got a really thick layer that kind of stopped me from getting anything more done so next time I use these I will definitely use the Excel blocks at the end because they they are so soft and they give up so much or I will use them for a background where I carefully add some but not too much and paint it out very well and yeah just layering and layering and eventually I get on with things so yeah this this took me about a couple of hours and I could have worked on it a bit more but the paper was kind of not working with me at at the end so I kind of just gave up I'm not done with neither the paper nor the the pencils I think it is quite a matter of getting used to working with it maybe I was pushing a little hard on the pencils because they were kind of hard now if uh, if you're sensitive to scratchy sound when you work these might not be the pencils for you because they even though they feel good to to use they do have kind of that <coughs> sound when you put them on the paper and at the beginning I was really looking at the paper going ah oh, am I gonna peel this and, and destroy it yeah and that's darker purple on those splotches in there and I'm pulling a little bit of that color over in the shadows over there by the mushrooms and if I have too much pigment I will just paint it off on the side of my my tape there and um, yeah looking for colors what to do what to do I want a green I want a green I want this one green but I didn't have a green because I used the two greens that I had over on the moss so the gr most green color I had was actually a bluish green tone and it turned out it worked just beautiful with this is supposed to be some bushes in the middle of the picture and I really wish I had planned those out better I had just sketched in some some a few lines here and there just indicating that okay here's a bush and you can draw a bush and um, yeah it didn't turn out well it ends up being just kind of one massive mess <laughs> that that's definitely a part I could have done better and if 
if I was to do this again, I would have chopped off maybe the top third of the paper and dropped it the tree trunk on the left. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the drawing. Um, yeah, and I'm missing a little bit of colors in, in that set, but, but overall they, they were really nice. I like how the, the, they play well together, all the colors in this set. So I was quite happy with, with the end result, aside from a couple of details here and there that could have been different. And, um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna use these again. This is one of those art supplies that I bought. Oh, I think I had those for nearly a year. Where I bought them and I tried them out a little bit and then they kind of disappeared into the, the stacks and piles of art supplies and things I have been purchasing over the past couple of years. And so, so I haven't really used them enough. Uh, even though I, I, I knew I had them and, and I wanted to use them, but there was kind of other things that kept on. Yeah, checking my phone. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, so, but, so I pulled them out now and um, I think I'm gonna do a, a series where I'm gonna dig through my art supplies and pull out some of those that I should and could use some more. And uh, yeah, more water. And here, because there's lots of pigment down there, there was so much in my breast that I could actually paint in the sky there, and that turned out quite okay. Yeah, I'll fix it. <laughs> All those bleeds. You can see how it, it bleeds out there beside the mushroom. Painted it out, got rid of it. But um, but yeah, that that's the paper that that did that. I might try a different kind of watercolor paper next time to keep th things more where they are. But but they are actually, if, if you're new to water medias, these are actually quite good because they only move if you want them to move. They they don't sail, uh, sail away. When I did the, the last paint over of the trunk, I actually put a, a lot of water on there because I just wanted the the colors to get really wet and soak into uh, get hold on to the paper and they didn't run you can of course if you put enough water and then tilt the paper but if you just leave it flat it just dries in where it is it uh, it doesn't have much dispersion at all and that can be good for people who's not used to it here i am using now the dark purple that i used over on the the other trunk to, to create some unity in, in the colors. Uh, they don't separate very well in this video, but in real life it really helped the, the color harmony of the, the drawing. Even though you think, okay, so you used a warm black and then you put a really dark, nearly black purple on top, and you, you can't barely see where I put the lines down, but it just in hands, the it just looks more much more harmonious. It looks like they come from the same environment, and that's always a good uh, a good thing to do. And that's also why I take the the green from the moss and I start shading the mushrooms with that. And on the other side of the mushrooms, I, I take the bluish green from that side and and start doing some some bottom shadings and stuff from from that side in. And, uh, and it works quite well. Now I'm not doing so much more of the the uh, water water fixation. Now I'm starting to just add some color and smear it because that gives some really nice soft transitions that I don't get with the when it, when I paint it. And that's that's the beauty of this product. It is that it's very versatile. You can get one kind of gradients if you use the water, and you get a different gradient if you put draw on the paper and then smear it a little bit with your finger. Uh, my me and my dirty fingers and my my 
pastel and charcoal drawings is a really bad habit. So do as I say and not as I do. You should really use a tortillon or I don't know if a color shaper will, will help here, but don't use your naked fingers on, on there. I don't think there's any toxic uh, pigments in, in this set, but I'm not sure. And if you got kits, especially looking at how you do art, don't teach them to use their fingers in paints or pigments. There are a number of pigments that are more or less toxic and it's a study in biology, biochemistry and and yeah, and regular chemistry to figure out which ones works how. Because just because a a chemical is toxic, it might be okay to touch it with your hands like this because it doesn't pass over the, the skin into your bloodstream. It might you might have to eat or drink it or breathe it in to to get it in your system and then it might cause havoc that, that way. And others can pass over your skin and cause problems. Then there's uh, with with dry pastels that being soft pastels or hard pastels or these tinted charcoals. I'm glad these didn't dust very much, but be careful not to breathe in your dust. If you're doing dusty drawings, don't blow away the dust. Pick up your paper, put it on one side and, and tap it gently and let it let whatever is loose fall off. Um, if you can make some kind of setup where you maybe have a wood block with a, that sits on top of a wet cloth that would be a good way to do it where you tap it on the the wood block and it uh, the, the dust falls onto something wet so it gets caught up on on that wet surface um i don't do that myself uh it's a bad habit of mine but younger people should really take care of their health better than i do with mine um but as I said, these are not very dusty and um, I really enjoy working with them. I don't know how much charcoal powder they put in each of the colors. There's a whole white pencil in there. I'm quite sure there is no charcoal in that. But um, all the colors are muted like this. I... Now this was kind of a, a test for me, what can I get out of this set, and um, I might do other drawings just with the 24 colors that are in there. But I am tempted to go and find my my pastel pencil set and find some of the brighter colors that I was missing a little bit in here. Those mushrooms were more sulfur yellow on the reference photo than, than this color I used. So, uh, and, and there was a couple, I could have used a couple of more shades of yellow. And I know I got those in, in, in my Dern pastel pencil set, so I might cheat with those later on. So, uh, yeah, here I'm using a dark black to, to sharpen up some, some contrasts. And, uh, Adding a little contrast in that bush. The bush looks better on on screen than it does in in real life. And uh, yeah, a little more darkness over on that trunk there, and that overlap of the leaves at the bottom that's really useless. Adding a little bit of spots on the mushrooms, and we're soon done. At the end, I'm spraying it with um, a little bit of Schmincke fixative. It's a matte fixative, and it can. I if if I decide to go in and and continue and uh, on some things here, I can do it on top of that fixative. So that's really good. Uh, the sketch I did. I uh, don't know if I ever showed you the pencil on this one. It's my Faber Castell erasable colored pencils. I use I use a brown ish reddish brown for, for the sketch and 
it absolutely disappeared in in the process of doing this so that was that was really nice yeah I'm trying out the the white for the end to to enhance some highlights here and there it works better than you can tell <laughs> I'm really just adding in a little bit of dots and edges here and there move my pencils ah there was something else I wanted to do yeah it needs a little bit more there and in a little bit it's fixative time and we're done there's the fixative thank you all for watching come back and I'll see you later